All right, stand by. Roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. Speeding. Slate. Scene one, take one. Mark. And action. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Friday at 2 o'clock. It's Bernie's Apple Box. Here we are. And let me tell you something today, a really exciting guest. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But just to let you know what my life has been like this morning, this is all a grand experiment. We're, uh, we're putting it all together. We built it piece by piece. And we, wa we walked in this morning, and the computer was dead. It was frozen. So we have been hustling right up to this moment to come to you at 2 p.m. Friday Live, and by God, we did it. And I am so glad we did because we have a really awesome guest. And this is a guy I've been trying to get on the show for a couple of months, but he's been so busy, we haven't been able to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, my great friend and, and one of my heroes, Rob Hart. Nice. Rob, nice, nice seeing you, buddy. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming. Um, one thing that uh, Rob is is really a storied background. He is one of the most creative people that I know. And Rob has so many experiences and stories. I know we're not going to get... I mean, <laughs> I've been sitting with Rob for an hour in the green room talking, and he's just blowing my mind. Every, every story was just another highlight and uh, so we're going to get through them today. I know we're not going to touch them all. I know, I know that yes. for sure. But, but Rob, thank you so much. And I, 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 I guess one of the things that I'd like to say is this is a man who was <laughs> one of 20 people in the room for the Sex Pistols' first <laughs> concert. So now you need bigger than that. We'll probably have yes. it for you. But, but yeah. Awesome. Well, well, thank you. Yes, that was at St. Martin's School of Art, and it was fun. They were truly awful, which was that <laughs> which was is perfect. Perfect punk. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I've got a zillion stories, but I was thinking about our community and what I do, and I thought today, yeah, I could talk about the dinners I've had with cannibals. True, three yeah. separate cannibals. Yeah. You weren't on the menu. No, I wasn't. But um, or I could talk about going to the North Pole or smuggling money and film into Argentina mm. during the war. But that can wait for another time. <laughs> uh, today, what I wanted to talk about was really the process of making moving pictures mm -hmm. and what happens in that strange journey that we all go on between here's an idea and here's the final piece. Right. And um, people have often said to me, how can you have a career that encompasses rock and roll? I set up MTV mm -hmm. or MTV In Europe. In London, right. Yeah. Uh, children's programs, okay. documentaries, um, and commercials, and video games. How does it all fit together? And this might sound corny, but the way I look at it is that we're storytellers. And at any particular time, I have a story that I need to get across to a particular audience. Now, I have means at my disposal to do that. That might be the size of the budget, the equipment that I have, the people, the team I have. Sure. But what I'm doing, no matter who the audience is, no matter what the resource is, no matter what the story is, my job is to make that happen. So it's actually very similar, whether you're dealing with a documentary about um, nuclear war, mm -hmm. or whether you're making a kiddies program. Mm -hmm. You've just got to get it across as effectively as you can. And um, funnily enough, you know, after all I've done, I like commercials. I particularly like them because they're short and mm -hmm. sweet, mm -hmm. and everyone cares about every second of them. Yeah. <laughs> there's, n there's very rarely, oh, there's, it's good there's enough. very little filler in yeah, there, right? Yeah. yeah. Every frame counts, and right. that suits me well. Right. Um, so I have, you know, my company, An Ideal World, which I will admit is the worst name for a company in America. Uh huh. Uh huh. Why? Why do you say it's the well, worst? It's my name and my company. It came about because my producer once said to me, "Rob, you're always saying in an ideal world we'd do it like this." Okay. Lou, Lou Chigaris, great guy. Uh huh. And when I formed a company, right, we're going to call it An Ideal World. Every day I have this thing I go through on the phone 
where I call someone and say, hi, this is Rob Hart from An Ideal World. And they go, Robert Hart, Ideal World? No, Rob Hart from An Ideal World. <laughs> and I turn into John Cleese. I mean, by the end of that call, I am, um, you know. You're explaining yourself. Oh, right, it's right. terrifying. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I just thought maybe in America it was a bad idea to use an. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, still, well, you know, we have our own <laughs> issues over here on this side of the pond, as you know. Yes. Tell me, I know that you, your father was a photographer, that's, am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Tell me, what kind of kid were you? What kind of kid I was? That's an interesting story. Um, a pretty odd one, to be Good. honest. Good. Um, you know, usual stuff I loved. Lego. Destined for media, then. Yeah, I, I, I used to spend a lot of time painting, okay. a lot of time making things. Mm -hmm. um, I would dream up epic, epic plans, that, you know, that I was going to take over the whole sand pit. And we would build castles from here to the other side. I'd have all the other kids working for me. And I guess it was pretty similar to what I do these days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I was that kind of kid. You were building... You looked at something and you wanted to build it out. Yes. I, I liked constructing fantasies. Yeah. And um, I didn't make films at that point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was uh, building stories. Did you have a lot of friends? Yeah, actually quite a lot of friends. Uh, some really close friends. And funnily enough, some of my friends, my childhood friends, are still my closest friends. That's awesome. I have friends that go back way to there. And it, when I go back to the UK, I go and see them and we pick up. No matter what the difference yeah. in time. Your friends for life, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, your father was a photographer. Yes. And he had a studio. Yeah. He okay. had he his name was Ward Hart. He passed away a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And he um, he worked for a company called Carlton before the war. And then during the war, he flew around in the nose cones of mosquitoes over the beaches. Mm. He uh, was in battleships uh, that traveled across the Atlantic and the Pacific. And was he a photographer? He was it? a photographer. His mm -hmm. job was to photograph um, whatever was required. In fact, he was put out of the war at the end of it because he was on a ship that was towing another ship for target practice. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to photograph the the bombs hitting the other ship. Unfortunately, they, they fired at the wrong ship. And they oh, hit. my gosh. They hit his ship. He was the only survivor. Are you kidding? Because he was on top of the ship with his telephoto lens. He was blown clear. Oh, my gosh. He swam back to the coast with a broken jaw. And um, in truth, that incident is not in the history books. The British Navy did they not. They covered it up. Yeah, and there was no point in telling Unbelievable. people. Unbelievable. But um, no, that was my father's war. He had a very exciting time. Yeah. And um, after the war, he worked for various photographers and then formed his own studio. Okay. So growing up as a kid, I grew up in a world of make-belief. Yeah. I grew up knowing that that beautiful looking cake that I'd want to try and just take a little bit of was actually made of filler. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That was plaster of right. Paris and, frosting. And my yeah. dad at home, he would build cupboards and the top cupboards wouldn't open. And he said, no one's ever going to use those ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally grew I up, like, I like I that. Grew I up like on that. a set. So you, and you grew up then with, a, your father was a photographer, so you understood images uh, and business at the same time, you, you realized he was running a business? Uh, right. I, I, as a kid, I was around the studio quite a lot. I, mm -hmm. One sad thing was that as a child, my father wouldn't let me have a camera. Why not? He didn't really want me going into the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your plan didn't work out too well. <laughs> no, it was actually the, the story of how that changed was uh, I borrowed my mom's camera because I draw, and I was drawing photorealistic pictures. And I needed more reference. I mm -hmm. couldn't just get stuff out of magazines. I needed to take pictures. Sure. So I'd taken a roll of Kodachrome. And I don't know if you remember how Kodachrome used to come in little yellow boxes sure. with your name on the top. Mm -hmm. So when they arrived at the house, it said Mr. Hart. My dad opened these up thinking they were his. And he looked at the slides and thought, I didn't take these. And then the penny dropped. Yeah. And he came into my room holding a Nikon and said, I think you need this. 
and he gave me his camera. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, it was a big deal for me to you know, have yeah. my dad accept that oh, I was no going to be in that world. Yeah, no kidding. What now? Uh, and then you went to St. Martin's School I, of Art? Yes, I was at art school. I trained as a graphic designer. Okay. So I know my pikers and my M's. I know all about <laughs> fonts and this and that. Uh, but I specialized in film and photography. Okay. Uh, my big break was I won an award for my photographs, which were for, a, it was an assignment. They said, find out what teddy boys, who were the followers of rock and roll, who'd been there in the UK since the 1950s and was still around, sure. uh, felt about Elvis Presley dying. And I discovered and got to know a lot about this huge rockabilly scene in London. And I took a lot of photographs, did a lot of interviews. And then on the basis of those, I won an award from the Great London Arts Association. Okay. I had a thousand pounds. How which, old were you at this I time? was at art school. I was about 19, 20. Okay. And I used my thousand pound award to finance my film, which was basically the same story. Uh, the film got shown in film festivals all over the world. Um, I got to go to Germany, and it was shown in oh, Russia cool. and in New York. It was 25 minutes, black so and white. So as a young person, you had some immediate success to kind of play yes, off of. Yes, and uh, that led to my first job, mm -hmm. which was tricky. I, I started work at Thames Television as a film editor. Okay. And I think I got the job because the man who was hiring me loved rock and roll, and when he saw my black and white documentary about it, then you were the kid that was in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's great. And so, yeah, it was an interesting start in the cutting rooms. Yeah. So, okay, so now you've got a job. Now you're in the business. You're in the industry right. like that. And you're, you're cutting. Are news items, are you? Uh, or? Originally, the first thing I cut was a show called The Sooty Show, which was this silly little yellow bear that I'd watched as a kid. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a thrill to cut it. In fact, yeah. I'll never forget the day I edited my first episode, you know, just me. And I gave it to Telecine, the film, and there was this weird feeling of, like, is anybody actually going to watch this? And I walked up Teddington High Street and took a little side street, and I was peering into people's front rooms to see <laughs> if anybody was... <laughs> and I saw might, might not be the best way to survey the show. <laughs> well, in Britain, we only had three channels at the time, so it was a pretty okay. good... Okay, so you, you, one out of three, you yeah. were probably going to get And lucky. I saw a few kids sitting there watching my show. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I was children's programs, but through... I won't go into it today, but there were some things that happened at Thames, and uh, the consequence was I got to pick whatever I wanted to do. Oh, wow. And uh, so I said I'd like to work in current affairs because I felt that, that if, you could, if you could handle current affairs, you could handle anything. Yeah. So I was on a show that was like 60 Minutes. It was called TVI. And about what year was this? That was early 80s. Early 80s. Uh, okay. I know because I was on that show and my boss came to me one weekend and said, here's an airline ticket to Buenos Aires. You'll be meeting an American carrying the Herald Tribune. He'll explain everything when you get there. Oh, my gosh. And literally, I was flown down to Montevideo, where I met this American. And he said, OK, plans have changed. Take over this address. Book a studio. Uh, we'll be in touch. And I spent six weeks during the war smuggling money and film into Buenos Aires. Unbelievable. $30,000 at a time in cash. Unbelievable. I 007. Oh, absolutely. There was one point where I was being followed by the Secret Service. Unreal. On my way to have dinner with the guy who I'd made friends with at the bank. Um, and I thought, I don't want to be, I want to get him into trouble. Yeah. And I was a little paranoid, but I thought, I'll check. I made the cab go to three different destinations, and the orange Volkswagen was still behind. <laughs> so I knew I was being followed. And I thought, okay, I'll pay the driver. Oh I'll my God. Jump out of the cab, run through this shopping center, which I knew had exits onto several streets. Yeah. And I do remember to this day the feeling of running through that shopping center thinking, a few years ago, I was at art school drawing naked ladies and learning about typography. <laughs> now I'm playing James Bond in South, uh, South yeah, America. Yeah, that's too wild, dude. That's but, too wild with the Falkland <laughs> Roar going on in Britain and you're British I, and Argentina. I loved it. And in fact, the man who sent me, his name was Ewart Needham, great guy. Uh -huh. And I stayed friends with him. Oh, that's and, great. And um, I never got to ask him the question, did he send me because I was young and expendable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. It, I hate to say it, Rob. That was probably it. Yeah, yeah I hate to say probably. it. Probably. So, so you, you were in Argentina. You did this. And now, um, 
now your career is starting to take it off. And how old are you again at um, this time? At that point, I was 23. 80s? Okay, 23. So now you're looking at your career and you're starting to think, how, how, maybe you're not. Were you just thinking, hey, I want to do everything or, well, or what? That's a good question. Um, I wanted to work, you know, in the field. I was in it. I was working, doing what I wanted. But I, I had a feeling that I would like to do more exciting jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the stuff that you do. It gets old doing the yeah. bear cartoons. So there was a man, uh, my mentor, a man called Nicholas Stowney. And Nick had been living with the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Mm. I was assigned to help him edit his film. Now, I was a little bit concerned about, you know, whether we'd get on. My background, punk rock, art school, his background, the SAS, the mercenary, and then, um, you know, a documentary filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But uh, we met up. And we became the best of friends within two weeks. That's awesome. And I'll tell a little story. Um, Nick invited me after two weeks to join him to make this documentary series for Channel 4 that was all about human survival. And the job was to take us literally all over the world, six one-hour documentaries. And it, it was amazing. I mean, I lived with tribes in the Amazon. I went to the North Pole. I filmed in Nazi concentration camps. I've met people who've eaten each other, all that stuff. Mm. And at the end of the series, I asked Nick, why did you offer me the job? And the reason he offered me the job was one day we were super busy cutting his film about the Mujahideen. And uh, it was his um, stepson's birthday. And I overheard him on the phone to his wife. And he was upset because he couldn't get out to buy a present. Yeah. So I said to Nick, look, forgive me eavesdropping, but um, do you want me to go down to the toy store and buy your stepson a present? And he said, would you really do that? And I said, well, of course, we're really busy here. You're needed. I've got a lunch break. I could go down there. So I went down and bought him something. I can't even remember what it was. And it was that that got me the job. Wow, that's something. It, you know what? It always comes down to being a human being, doesn't it? Right. It it does. And it's 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 so amazing. You know what? I'm gonna we're gonna see some of the stuff you right. do too. And believe me, this is we are hitting only the highest high points here. <laughs> He's got there's a lot of juice behind here, but including the time that he nearly faked an injury so Paul McCartney he could meet him <laughs> after he hit him on his bike. Um, but but anyway. We're going to go to a couple commercial breaks here, and then we're going to come back and we're going to see some of the stuff you've done, sure. Rob. No problem. Hi, I'm Bernie. I own Bernie's Grip and Lighting, San Diego Grip and Lighting, and Los Angeles Grip and Lighting. You know, we pride ourselves on not only renting you the best equipment, but also giving you the best crews. And one of our core values here at Bernie's Grip and Lighting is that we give you the highest production value in the world. And remember, people used to say national, local. No, we present world-class production value on every set. We also know budgets are very tight these days, and you've got 10 hours to get what you need in the can. We move ahead, we move fast, and we know what you need. When you rent from Bernie's Grip and Lighting, you have a partner on your production for that day that is making sure you are well taken care of. So anytime you're in Southern California, give us a call at 714-609-3545 and we'll take very good care of you. See you on set. Hi, this is Bernie, owner of Bernie's Grip and Lighting and I'm also the manager here at Dot Lot Stages. Dot Lot Stages I've been shooting at for over the last 10 years. We have two stages. We have a 20 by 23 foot full body green screen room. We also have what's behind me, which is a 30 by 40 foot white psych stage. It's lit by six 2K space lights. All of the lighting for the green screen and white psych comes pre-lit. Now, the price for the stage is $1,000 for 11 hours, and that comes with a stage manager 
and 600 amps of power. Now how I'm going to get the word out, and this is for my friends who have used Bernie's Grip and Lighting before and my Facebook friends, is that if you rent the stage and you rent my three ton stage package, which includes a full tungsten package with Chimera, all the distribution, all of the grip and stands and everything else you need, I will give you the stage at half price. So what that means is you'll get the stage and the grip and lighting package for $1,100. That's only $100 more than the stage would have cost itself. It's a great deal and I'm doing this because I want to keep my stage working and keep it busy. So give me a call at 714-609-3545. That's 714-609-3545. I'll see you on set. All right, here we are, Bernie's Apple Box, and uh, here with Rob Hart, my, my <laughs> hero. And uh, first, I want to give a shout out to our crew. You can put the camera on you, Nick. Uh, uh, Travis Thomas, Hunter Rogers, and Nick Brandstetter, who worked their keisters off to bring us on the air today. And we got uh, Tony Hope sitting in back there, too. Thanks for stopping by, Tony. Um, but, uh, Rob, I want to see the juice now. I want to see the good <laughs> stuff. I know. And, and, you know, Rob is, I'll, I'll just tell you from my point of view, I don't know Rob real well. We've met we've, we've over the years a couple times and stuff. But let me tell you, and, and you may not, I'm sure you should know this if you don't, he, this guy's like a legend. Whenever you hear the name Rob Hart, you know it's the top end. You know it's the best that can be done. And Rob Hart is just one of those names that's like Mercedes or or Rolls Royce. It's just got all of the stamp of approval on it. And and I'm really glad you came down here yeah. today. I really appreciate it. You're the top <laughs> of the line. Thank you very much. That's very kind. It's true. It's true. So I think we're going to take a look at some of your stuff. What's yeah, up first? This is a, a showreel. Um, and embarrassed to say it's not entirely up to date, but it will give you an idea of some of the stuff we've done. Okay. And um, I think, I mean, it says it on the reel, the thing that's unusual about an ideal world is we're a production company and we're a post company. Sometimes we're working with agencies where they come to us with a script, with an idea. Sometimes we're just working directly for the client where we come up with the idea. Okay. Um, so our job is just to make the best of whatever needs to be done. So this reel will give you just a kind of an overview of some of that stuff. Okay. okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs>
awesome, my <laughs> friend. That was very cool. Yes. I really love that underwater air gag you did. Yeah, that was the... actually, that came about when the client said to us, um, could you, um, oh, yes, hold that one for a moment. Yeah. Um, asked me to put a mermaid on a fish counter, but with flowing underwater hair. But we had 10 days to do the job. Okay. So the only way of getting it to work, I came up with the idea, well, we'll shoot the hair on a wig stand in a swimming pool here. The girl we shot in Houston, we put the two together. Oh, you uh, shot it in Houston? Yeah. So we went to Houston to do the shoot for the girl with the mermaid and then uh, put it together. It's, uh, now, why did you select Houston? Well, that's where the agency were. Oh, that was the so agency. So they asked me to go and film Got there, you. and then I filmed the other Got bit uh, myself. Um, I wanted to pick out, you'll see in yeah. a few bits there, some stuff for the Maxima there. Mm -hmm. um, that was the launch of the Nissan Maxima, and we shot that one in an unusual way. Uh, I'd like to show if we could jump to the first still. Is that possible, Nick? Can you pull up um, the first still on your timeline? This was, uh, you actually met the guy I did this with, uh, Jeff Granbury. Oh, I know Jeff. Very, yeah. Jeff has been on the show. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Jeff put this shoot together. Is that the boat uh, uh, that we're going to look at? The first no, still? it's actually the first one is uh, the one of a big blown up blimp in the blimp hangar. You got that oh, one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this was a thing called a photo bubble that we, uh, Jeff arranged to have inflated inside the blimp hangers here you, in Tustin. You know what? I actually supplied you guys with the 6Ks okay. that you used there on that. So, yeah, I <laughs> delivered those over the one morning. Jeff gave oh, me the tour yeah. over there. So that That's was awesome. So can, can they see awesome. that image? Have we got that one? Uh, they can see. Oh, okay. I can't. All right. All right. So that was a fun shoot. And I really enjoyed that. It was actually the very first time we used the red camera. Okay. And that was a few years back now. Yeah, that was Almost, a red one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was yeah. nine years ago we did that. Wow. Um, nine years yes. ago. Incredible. And, but I really enjoyed that shoot. Jeff did a great job in putting that all together. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Lovely images from that. Yeah. Um, the other one I wanted to draw attention to was uh, one I did for Marty Brinkerhoff. Okay. Uh, you saw some pictures in there. Is this of, video yes, or still? This video. Um, okay. Well, actually, what I'd like to do is if we could pull up the still of the watercraft. It would be the next one along. Um, you see us. Have you got and that there, And we can't Nick? see the pictures, so we're just uh, okay. relying well, on let me uh, Let me explain this job. Marty came mm -hmm. to me with a script. Yeah, the Honda one. Yeah. He came to me with a script. Uh, it was for uh, the launch of that craft. And this was to be a big show at the Anaheim Convention Center. Five HD screens. Wow. Um, dancers, lasers, and at the end of the piece, they unveil the craft. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a snag. The craft was still in production. Okay. It didn't exist. But they had a prototype, which was a mock-up of it. Yeah. So I went with Marty up to Honda's campus to see this thing. And we're taken to a room where they unveiled the craft, which you can see there. Now, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm saying to Marty, well, the script calls for this and that. So, you know, we're going to need to mount this thing on a gimbal, and we're going to be throwing water at it. And the guys from Honda just have kittens. They're like, <laughs> no, no, you can't touch this. Uh, you can't sit on it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Marty, how am I going to film people having fun on this thing if I can't put anybody on it? I can't get it wet. This is yeah, it's really be a little tough. very tough. And uh, so we drove back in kind of silence, and I'm thinking, you know, Marcy, I've got an idea. How about we don't show the craft? How about we just show the experience of the craft? Mm. Maybe we do a thing with dancers and slow motion water. And Marty's driving and he's nodding and he's saying, lovely idea, Rob, but you know, they'll never go for it. <laughs> yeah, they they, they want to see their craft. Yeah, they want to see the thing. So I got back to my studio and I wouldn't let go of this. So um, I was thinking and I thought, you know what, I better just show Marty what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I cut from stock footage and a couple of bits of music that I actually edited together, a little demo piece. This is called Honda HW5 Concept. If you could... Uh, Skip down to that and just play this video. So this is what I showed. I, I rang Marty and said, here, have a look at this. So this is what you showed the yeah. client and said uh, well, this I, what yes. was something we could do. The, what was an idea of the concept? Yeah. So if we could run this, it would be good. <laughs> So 
because it was all about playing the music. And um, Marcy loved it a little bit. Yeah. But he said, listen, Rob, I know Honda, and this isn't going to happen. Yeah. So I left it. Yeah. About 5 p.m., I got a call from Marcy. And he's like, Rob, you know that video you sent me? I think we're going to be doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened? And he said, well, after Honda showed us the craft, they, have a, they actually have their own TV studio mm -hmm. on their campus. They had to move it back to the R&D building. And they were moving it in the back of a pickup truck. And this priceless prototype rolled out of the back of the pickup truck. Oh, and smashed to pieces in the street. Oh. There was no model. The only thing that existed were the photographs that I'd taken. Unbelievable. And of course, they had pictures they as well. Had, yeah. uh, so there was nothing to shoot. Mm. And by sheer luck, I got to do what I wanted to do. Incredible. So we literally, we hired South Bay for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. We built an above ground swimming pool on the stage. Wow. We had a platform in the swimming pool which dancers could stand on. It looked like they were walking on water. We used, uh, on the basis of that little test, I thought, well, the thing about slow motion photography is it's a shame that you can't have a camera move. Because the camera, sure. you know, how do you move a camera yeah. fast enough? Yeah. Um, so that I did, was pre-days of the bolt and stuff exactly, like that. Exactly, which, yeah. funnily enough, I'll yeah. mention in a bit. Um, but I knew these guys at Camera Control who had the Milo. Okay. So what we did was we hired a phantom and we put it on the Milo, moving at six feet per second. Wow. And uh, it was a crazy, crazy shoot. And the funny thing is that in the video, when you watch it, the movements are actually very subtle. But uh -huh. there are movements. There's a little bit of parallax on that. Okay. Which gave it something quite special. And uh, the choreographer, he was funny because when he saw his dancers played back, from we were shooting at a thousand frames a second, he was like, he was out. And I said, yeah, but Fred, <laughs> he was out by two thousandths of a second. Yeah, nothing you can <laughs> see with a human eye. Right. Yeah. But in fact, we could see it when it was slowed down. But that was done with a weird mixture. We had garden hoses in that, Wild. all kinds of bits and pieces. And it was a really fun shoot. And it worked. And it worked perfectly. And um, when the final video was shown, at the Anaheim Convention Center in front of several thousand people. It was such a buzz wow. to see it up there on five screens. And it was something quite unique and fairly original. And if that pickup truck hadn't dropped it, yeah, I would never have that. got to do it. Who knows what would have uh, come, but, probably some, certainly not as good, <laughs> I would think. It was nice that Marcy had the confidence to go for it with me. Yeah, And um, I'm glad that I made that little demo piece you know, that brings up a point, and I want to talk about it, too. Somebody in your position, I mean, it's fairly easy to understand why somebody hires me. I, I describe myself as like a backhoe operator. And sometime in the production, you are going to need my services to create the product. Right. You know, just like a backhoe comes in and digs yes. the ditch for the foundation and everything like that. You, however, are somebody who is more selected you know they're not just going to take anybody who's got lighting or somebody who's got this right you're somebody where they really have to for the agency everything may be riding on their clients perception of you and the ideas mm. that you come up with tell me about that arrangement with well, your okay. clients well it's funny it kind of connects quite nicely i got to know marty brinkerhoff at mba because of another commercial that I'd done. Okay. Uh, Rich Schaefer, you know Rich? I know Rich. He sure. was working with Marty. Marty asked him, uh, do you know who did that particular ad? And it was an ad I'd made for Toshiba. And he said, oh, it's a friend of mine, Rob. You know, he's a director. He's around here, visual effects wizard. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was invited to go meet Marty on the basis of that commercial. And... Um, in fact, uh, we could have a look at that. It's, uh, it's the one called Toshiba BFS. This was um, made for DGWB at the time. Mm -hmm. And it started, they showed me a poster. And uh, the poster was of a photocopier just screaming across the sort flats. And it said, the fastest photocopier in the world. 
I worked with Aaron Orton there, mm -hmm. and Aaron and I looked at a lot of stock footage, and we chose these pieces, and then we shot this in the parking lot, just around the corner from here, on a DV camera. Oh my gosh. Uh, Prince, no budget. Yeah. And I said, you know, I'm gonna trash the hell out of this footage, so I don't care about the quality of it. Um, I'm just gonna comp this into these old scratchy shots. So can we play it? And you Is that, did early. you find that, Nick? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Some of the world's fastest machines get their annual workout over the gleaming <laughs> salt flats of Bonneville, Utah. No, I didn't say to shoot. We had to put that on. You put that in. That looks flawless. Oh, this is my favorite. The they were working, obviously, on the car, but we made them work on the machine. The hot rods are ready and raring to go. They'll race against time on the long, straight stretches. <laughs> the Toshiba E-Studio 1050 gets ready to take off in the black and white copier class. This class reaches speeds of over 100 This particular commercial won a Belding Award, which I think East for all the awards I have on my shelf is the one I'm most proud of. It's a what? A Belding Award. It's a so very Our nice camera to the Toshiba engine turning 105 that pages per awesome. minute. An unofficial new record. Another banner year for Toshiba, the E-Studio 1050 proves to be one of the fastest ever. Who knows? Next year, they'll be copying on rocket rods or jet mobiles. And the, the shot that at, is brilliant, my friend. The shot at the end with the door, yeah. that meant I got the art director to lie on the ground and move the door of the copier. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the other person who deserves a lot of credit for that is my colleague Sharon Diaz. Oh, Sharon, um, I know Sharon. Sharon did so much rotoscoping on that job. Oh, my and, gosh. And, uh, you know, I've never pulled that off without her help. It oh, was she is so awesome. Wonderful. She is so awesome. So that so was... That uh, must have been... And what award did you win That won that? the Belding Bowl. Now, it tell me about exist. that award. It was a very prestigious advertising competition, which no longer exists. But um, all I can say is to win that... It's kind of like winning an Oscar. Wow. It was lovely. And That's it was so great. nice to be recognized. Sure. That. So, yeah. Well, next week are the Addies, and uh, yeah. we'll see how we all do okay, in that. Okay, good, but, uh, good, yeah. good, good. So, yeah, that, that's a, a good case study whereby that job led to the relationship with Marty. Okay. That job came to me from DGWB because they know me, and they know that in that case the thing to do is to talk to me at the outset, mm -hmm. because they want to know, how are we going to do this? We've got this great concept. Where can it go? Yeah. And when I sat there with Aaron and we went through stock footage, I said, well, I could do that one. Ah, no, that one wouldn't work. Yeah. So I was able to select them. Then he did a rough edit, and then we worked from there, and I shot the pieces, and then we put oh, it that's together. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I think we're going to take another break right here, but we're going to take a break and come back with Rob Hart. All right. See you soon. Bernie's workshop is fantastic. Bernie's workshop is awesome. Bernie's workshop is insightful. Bernie, in one word, passionate maybe. You can tell he really cares a lot. Bernie is a badass. <laughs> He's a great teacher. He has great stories. And I would recommend this to anyone. Not only someone like me who's starting day one, but you know I feel that in any profession, as you sharpen your sword, it always gets sharper. I think the one, the best thing about this is, is the access to understanding how to run your business, how to actually be in this filmmaking industry and make money at it. Coming to this workshop, I think, is what actually gets you the tools to understand how to do that, how to get out there and can sell yourself. I thought that was really cool. I thought, um, he, I mean, he knows all the tricks in the book and uh, he knows how to show that to us and actually demonstrate it so we actually know what he's talking about. I really like the, the hands-on experience. That's, that's something that you don't find a lot, but something you have to go on, on set a lot to, uh, to just appreciate. I know we, this is light examiner, but it's not only talk about lighting. He also share his business experience, personal experience, and tell us, guide us to what we should do, what kind of personality we should have in this business. His stories, I think that they kind of Say, say everything all in a few example stories that he gives out from time to time. I would recommend this workshop to anybody who just spread into the industry, people who just don't know the swing of it. Um, a lot of the stuff they don't teach you in film school. I deal with a lot of freelancers every day, a lot of peers that I went to school with, a lot of professionals in the field, and they all need to take this class because it just, it just it puts you on the next level, on the next playing field. Bernie's a great guy. Bernie's really authentic. 
Like everything he learns, everything he teaches, the way he handles himself, the way he deals with other people, he's a one of a kind guy. Someone I've never come across before in the industry and someone I hope to emulate and hope that there are more people like him out there that can help. Onset University is the place where you'll learn how to build your business. On our site, you'll find hours of information that you can use immediately. No matter where you're at in your career, you can use these strategies to grow your business. Also, I'll show you how to use social media to boost your business in a big way. What I teach are real world practical solutions to make you successful. Join our community at Onset University. Hey everybody, welcome back here with my good friend Rob Hart and we're just, we're getting down to it now. We're talking about clients, we're talking about creative and Rob is just, this guy, <laughs> I could do a 24 hour show right now. I couldn't, but yeah. I could if Rob was here, that's for sure. So Rob, what else we've got? Show well, us a few things. I'd like to talk about Mother's Car Polish. They've okay. been a good client of ours for several years now. In fact, we've just finished an amazing spot for them that we shot out in the desert. But the one I'm going to go back to was one for a, a product which was a water spot remover. This is a product that if you get water spots on your windshield, it will get rid of them. Okay. Uh, the concept we came up with for this was uh, a 360 degree move on a BMW where you start at the hood, you go inside the car where you can see the water spots, you come out of the car and back around again. Wow. And you go through the interior twice. So the question is, how do you do that? I'll show you the spot if we could. Yeah, yeah let's take a this, look at um, that. The, if we could pause it just after the spot would be great. Who said it never rains in Southern California? It rains bugs, tar, grime, smog, and sometimes it even actually rains. For all the above, there's Mother's California Gold Water Spot Remover for glass. Powerful mineral dissolving agents remove any trace of hard water spots, eliminating unsafe vision reducing sediments from windshields, mirrors, and other exterior glass surfaces, making it the clear choice. Mother's Water Spot Remover for glass. Pure California Gold. Okay, okay tell us now, how did you do that? <laughs> It's actually quite simple. The cars are convertible. Ah. And it was shot with a motion control rig. Ah. So if you could run this part, we'll, we'll reveal the behind the scenes and you'll see a little bit of the shoot. There's, um, is it right if I talk over this piece as we run it? Yeah. Okay, so this will give you a little bit of the, the story. Is that running now? Okay, so here you see you know the spot and there's a mm -hmm. lightning storm mm -hmm. now this car was actually shot not on location uh but shot in the studio okay so what you're seeing is actually a car comped into that street okay so we filmed the car at south bay on green screen okay and then we went down to del mar where we found a street to shoot the backgrounds oh. and we matched them together by using a motion control interesting piece. so if you keep running so here you can see the car on the green screen okay there's the milo uh long arm with the red camera on it and we're just lining up the first part we shot this in 26 pieces wow and uh so the actor there's jeff gordon my mm -hmm. colleague and mm -hmm. jeff and i co-directed this one uh so in this particular part of it the actor has to go to the door so we film coming around here and the camera moves all the way as far as we dare go and then we stop. Now what we do is we take the roof off hmm. and we pick up and we film the part going through the car. Now before we do that we also have to pick up, we have to shoot our little bit with the rain. Now I love to do things practically Mm -hmm. So we brought a rain machine into the studio. Oh my gosh. And I see and you built a little trough down yes, there below the car. That's why we had the black stuff, the, the gotcha. black plastic hit before. And I was about to ask you what that thing above it was. Yes. Now obviously it's the rain Real machine. rain. Yeah. And you will see the actual raw footage here that we shot. And it was beautiful. Watch as the Milo comes around. Wow. And... And you get a couple strobes up there for the yeah, flash. Yeah, so we use one of those lightning uh, strikes. Um, see, there's the oh, original footage. Oh, that is footage. so awesome! 
And of course, we had a little bit of retouching, then we doubled it up with two takes. Mm -hmm. And that was a way of realizing that idea of it never rains in Southern California, boom, but, it rains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's the storyboard, which Jeff did on um, a piece of software that allowed us to visualize everything first. Mm -hmm. Here we are down in Del Mar, okay. and we, put the motion control rig in two positions, shot it twice, okay. and that way we were able to join them together and lose the rig and create a continuous backplate, wow. which matched exactly the lensing of the car. That is so phenomenal. This was a tricky piece. Yeah. It took yeah. a lot a lot of work in our flame to bring it all together. How, how long did it take in the post world to do that? That particular one, all I'll say is it took a lot longer than I would have liked. Okay. Part of the problem was we got a black car uh -huh. and there was no choice on that. Thankfully, we were able to borrow a car, beautiful BMW with a roof that could be removed. Yeah. Uh, we had the spot almost finished, but I had to roto the bottom of the car because there was no way of keying it against the black. Mm. Um, then on top of all of that, spot's almost finished and we discover we're not going to be allowed to use the BMW batch. Oh, my gosh. So I had to paint out the when badge. When it's all done? When it's all done. Well, almost done. Uh, we had to go in and paint out the badge. Now, you remember the shot with the rain? Yeah. That's very difficult to paint out where oh you've got rain dropping on the gosh. badge. Uh, but that's the other side of my company. Yeah. Fixing stuff. We fix our own stuff. Right. And we fix a lot of stuff for other people. Right. Recently, I've just done some work for Mattel. I just did some work for Nickelodeon. And, and you told me before yeah. the show something funny about being the <laughs> fixer. Tell me what that is. Well, it's, it's a, am I allowed to swear just a little bit? Okay. Uh, it's a slogan I was thinking about for the company, which yeah. is, go ahead and fuck up. We'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> but no, and, you said, and you said that the guy who fixes something always does great work. Well, that's the truth. I mean, a lot of what we do, there's a lot of stress because you're, you're putting your creativity on the line. You're being judged all the time. But when I'm doing fix-it work, there's no judging. It's right or it's not. Yeah. You can't be more right. You can't be more fixed. So if you nail it, yeah. then you're, you're the And that's hero. the whole point of what we do. Yeah. The tricks yeah. and the techniques we use, I mean, to some people, they seem like magic. Right. Uh, and really, I've noticed most clients don't care how we fix it. Of course. They just want it done. That's right. That's right. They don't think about this part. They just want to see their end result, their creativity execute. Right. Or they want the big problem of the logo they can't use, the skyline yeah. that's wrong, yeah. the con contrail that went through the shot, whatever it may be that has to go. They just want it fixed. Fixed. The yeah. scratch on the table, the dust on the trophy. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do a lot of removing logos. We do a lot of, I mean, the other day I did one uh, where I had to take a tattoo off a lady's hand. Mm. And it was complex because she's moving her hand. It's going through shadows. So all of the time it's a different, it's different every frame Every is frame's different. different. Yeah. And uh, I worked out a little trick and I painted that. Awesome. Um, and I enjoy doing that stuff. I yeah. actually regard that as relaxing. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's the trick. That's a trick. Most people would be all stressed. No, for me it's... It, it gives you joy. Well, when you've... At my studio, during a fix-it job, it's kind of interesting. Or actually, sometimes during the more complex visual effects jobs, you'll often walk in and hear books being read. Mm. Because as we're working, we listen to literature. Oh, that's awesome. And it, that's it's great, great because idea. your hand, your mind are doing this. But there's still room to take in a story. So quite honestly, if we're there for hours painting, mm -hmm. to be entertained by great literature makes the whole experience fantastic. That sounds, that sounds so, good. I don't think that's going to work on the grip truck, but I'll, I'll give it a try at home. <laughs> I'll give it a try at home. You know, let me ask you this. On something like this, and this is great, and thank you for bringing this footage in right. because that's exactly the type of stuff that I'm trying to show here right. is how we all work. And, you know, one of the things is, too, just to get on my Apple box for a minute, is one of the things here, my, one of my passions is that people – will sit at home and watch millions, literally in their lifetime, millions of hours of media and never question how they did it. Not only, not just how you did it, but why is why am I being presented with this? Why is it put together in the way it's put together? 
And why are they showing it to me? It seems like no one asked that question, you know. But and that's something I'm, I'm, I know it's not what we're going after, but I think for the public to be more educated about media is an important thing. Well, true. And yet, in a sense, it's funny that with all the making ofs, the, mm -hmm. the bonus material at the end of every right. DVD, uh, a, there's a generation coming up who are very aware of how it's done. Yes. A um, friend of mine, uh, Dawn Marie. Yes, you know I know Dawn, Dawn Marie. Marie, absolutely. Um, she was explaining to her son that she needed to go to Hawaii to film a certain scene. Yeah. And her son said to her, Mom, haven't you heard of green screen? <laughs> That's good. Yes, son, I have heard of green screen. I paid thousands yeah. of dollars for green screens so, in my day. Yes. Um, should people know what's behind the curtain? I think they, they get it. I mean, the truth is, at the end of the day, I like effects which uh, realize a vision. Right. That get that story told. Yeah. That make that crazy idea of, like, let's go inside the car, let's come outside the car, yeah. work. Yeah. The yeah. fact it took 26 takes of bits and pieces which to we had to that. bolt together as seamlessly as we could. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, it's fun to show it sometimes. And you know what? It... There is a case of, of that special effect really showing the product. I mean, you know, you, you right. get the spots in the windows. You get the right. whole idea right visually with well, that, even if you didn't have any audio on that. Well, maybe I could it. show one more. You mentioned another piece of gear. I mean, I like to keep abreast of all the toys at my disposal. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned before that on the Martin Brinkerhoff job, we put the uh, Phantom at that time on a Milo, which is a right. motion control rig. Well, the same company now have this thing, the Bolt. Yes, okay. No, the Bolt, right. the Bolt worked is that a couple times. crazy. Yeah. I mean, this thing is here, then it's there. Yeah. So we had a job, another one for mothers, where we needed to promote this aerosol version of Back to Black. Mm -hmm. And we came up with the idea that wouldn't it be fun to see the aerosol filmed in slow motion, but with the camera moving? So um, let's just run this one. Yeah, Give me an idea. let's take a look. We could tell you all about Mother's Back to Black aerosol, but we'd rather show you. Back to Black coats with a fine, even mist. It's the effortless way to deep, rich blacks. Simply spray and walk away. Mother's Back to Black trim and plastic restorer. Now in aerosol. Now that aerosol that we saw there did was that post or did you, was that all, all that's, real? that's entirely real. Wow, that's awesome. The only thing that we did in post was to lose little bits of dust on the car. Okay. We borrowed the car and there were some chips, there was some dust that's that we a had great to get job. rid of. Who 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 lit that for you? Who was the DP? Uh Rich. Rich, uh, Rich yeah. did that one. Rich and, does uh, such awesome work. And that again I did with uh Jeff Gordon. Mm -hmm. Uh Jeff was actually the hand. We decided in the end that we knew what we wanted, so he might as well be the hand. Yeah. And there was a sort of funny um, side effect of this particular product. One day of shooting with that aerosol, he was so stoned. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I think the whole That's crew were... You realize you should have invested in the masks. Well, I had right? masks. I had masks. But, you know, <laughs> he would take the masks off. We opened the door. It was in oh the air. Oh, my gosh. It was... It was uh, problem that I had not anticipated no, on that No, I would say not. Yeah. But, um, yeah. no. They so just survived it. Let me good. ask you this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, not this one, but the one we just saw before yeah. with the, the, the window uh, going. Yeah. What was the budget on that? What, what kind of budget was on that, that commercial? Um, I couldn't actually tell you that one alone because what we did that year was we shot a bunch of commercials at the same time. Okay. So to extract the particular budget for that part of the day, and they vary tremendously. All I would say is that with the mother's jobs, um, they can be from quite small, the budgets, to pretty large. I mean, mm -hmm. the one we shot in the desert recently was a, a pretty big budget. I'd rather not say figures. Yeah, I But, um, I mean, there have been times, like uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, did a spot, which I liked for them, which was called VLR, and it was based on the idea of what happens when a kid gets into a car. Okay. Okay. And um, this was a two-day shoot, two locations, three actors. In fact, 
there's the spot. Let's just okay. run this Yeah, one. let's run it. Nothing in the world feels like a new car. Knowing that your car is in perfect condition and you will keep it that way forever. But sometimes forever doesn't last very long. But it's okay because Mother's is here for you with VLR, Vinyl Leather and Rubber Care, specially formulated for an intensive yet gentle cleaning. It safely removes even the most stubborn soils and stains. Mother's VLR will help keep your car looking new for a long, long time. Okay. Awesome. That's so good. that particular year, we had that product and another one. And so what we did was we spent all the money on this commercial and the other commercial we shot on a GoPro. And literally oh. I used a, a three-axis gimbal with the GoPro on the end of an arm. Okay. And I shot it myself down at the beach. And uh, so in that particular time, this one needed the money, the other one didn't. And we, right. We and traded. so you were able to marry yeah. the two and And, and so that's really how it works with me. I try and look at the big picture. And when people ask me, well, how much is that going to cost? Yeah. I go away and I budget it. Mm -hmm. I budget how many people do I need, how many locations, mm -hmm. what equipment am I going to use. And though I'm very fortunate that I got to use some very, very nice toys, some big stages, um, I always look at the job as to what it needs. I mean, and sometimes it's surprising that if you spend on the job, the returns can be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One of our big clients is Paul Mitchell, the hair yeah. people. And Paul Mitchell Schools came to me years ago now and asked me to budget a set of boards they'd come up with of how they wanted to do their haircutting, uh, uh, their haircutting instruction. And I looked at these boards, and I tell you, I came up with a budget that was over 700000 Right, right. And a year later, I rang the contact who'd introduced me and said, hey, Bill, this isn't going to happen, is it? I frightened them away with the budget. And he went, oh, no, no. They, they've raised the money. They're going to do it. They've, they've, <laughs> I was so surprised. Yeah. You but think, the, oh, I've but, scared him to death now. But the job happened. It was a four DVD set. We shot it with multiple red cameras. Wow. And this has now gone on, and we've done three projects for them. The last one involves 17 haircuts shot on five cameras, including 3D scanning of the heads. Incredible. And I discovered afterwards that the most that they'd ever spent on videos beforehand was in the sort of thirty, forty thousand region. Unbelievable. But in doing putting the investment in and doing these properly, the videos are so popular, they have literally made millions and millions of dollars in selling them. That's awesome. So I believe that you have to look at a project as to what it needs. And don't spend money where you don't need to. I hate to see money wasted. I want to put the money on the screen. Yeah. Oh, that's that's you, you are talking my my yeah. truth, <laughs> Rob. I can't believe it, but an hour is up. Believe it or not, how do we? How does somebody get a hold of you, Rob? Um, go to the website. Uh, go to www.anidealworld.com. And An, ideal world. Yes, a n i d e a l world dot com. Awesome. And awesome. Um, there's a contact form. You can drop me a message from there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, poke around the site. There's tons of stuff there. There's an interesting thing I think the people watching this would probably like. Under the archive, there's a behind the scenes tab. Okay. And That'd so some good. of the videos you saw today and many, many more, even going back to there's a lovely behind the scenes of um, the first project my company did was a after I'd worked at Virgin Interactive making video games, I was desperate to get back into real television. And um, the very first commission I got was a video game. But awesome. It, it was a good one. It was a Star Trek piece, and it starred Christopher Plummer, um, and it was basically 97 minutes of green screen, uh, but I invented a technique for it with a moving camera. We motion captured the camera, which, funny enough, was exactly what uh, James Cameron did 16 years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, You're Rob. Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by the Apple Box. And I'll see you next Friday at 2 p.m. Thanks again, Rob. You're welcome. It's fun. Cut. That's a wrap.